You guys ready? All right, so who's used a miter saw before? I know if you had wood shop with me last year, most of the, all of you used it unless I helped you with it. Okay, so for those who remember using the miter saw, uh, before you use it, what do you got to do first? Safety glasses. Safety glasses. So you need to make sure you have safety glasses. Anything else? You need to ask me. You need to make sure the power in the dust collector is turned on. Uh, what about what you're wearing? Got the baggy, so I'm pretty good except long sleeves. Roll them up. Jewelry, no jewelry. So things like uh, bracelets, watches, rings. Closed toed shoes. Closed toed shoes, so it's winter time, so everybody should have closed toed shoes on. Uh, what else? Did we say long hair? So long hair needs to be tied back, so make sure when you're using power tools that if you have long hair, you have some kind of elastic. If you don't, I have rubber elastics, but those are not fun in hair, right girls? Yeah, I'm taking the curve. All right, so once I have my piece of wood, do I just go ahead and cut it, or do I have to do something to this first? I need to mark it. Okay, so we need to mark it, so let's measure it. Let's say I want to cut it to, I don't know, 14 inches. I'm gonna cut a little bit off for this. So make your mark, then take a square, draw your line across, make sure it's nice and perpendicular so our line is nice and straight, okay? So it looks like this. Now, when I cut this, does it matter where I put this on the table? Like, could I just put it like right here, line it up and cut it? No. Why? So it needs to be against the fence, okay? Because if I left it here and tried to cut it, it would slam back. And do you guys know what that's called when a piece of wood slams back like that? Kickback, okay? So we want to avoid kickback, so we need to make sure it's flat against the table and flat against the fence, and then we're ready to cut. But now, when we cut it, if I want to keep this piece right here, does it matter where I put the saw blade? So where should I put the saw blade? On the side that I measured? Or the other side? The other side. Why the other side? Because they can cut a little bit. Yeah, so if you look at the saw blade, most saw blades are about an eighth of an inch wide. So if I accidentally put it on the wrong side of my line, instead of it being 14 inches, it's going to be 13 and 7 eighths of an inch, depending on where you put it. Okay? So I usually put a little X on the side, that's my waist side, so that I know when I'm putting the saw blade down, it lines up on that side. Okay? Now, some other things before we actually use the saw. Does it matter how big your piece of wood is before we use this? Yes. yes. How so? Like, is there a size limit? Inside the red line. That's something else. Like, what, so what is the smallest piece of wood you think I can cut on this? Do you remember? There's a specific measure. Eight inches. Okay, so if your piece of wood is smaller than eight inches, you cannot use it on the miter saw, okay? Because if it's smaller than eight inches, back to what you guys were just saying, uh, do you know what these lines on this fence are for? So this area is the danger zone, so I need to make sure my fingers are outside of this, okay? So when it comes to you guys' uh, safety tests, uh, the measurement you need to remember is six inches. Okay, so my hands need to be at least six inches away from this blade at all times. So on this, you'll see there's two lines actually here. Six inches is this line, but most miter saws have their own measurements. So they, this one has like a little like no hand symbol and a little line here. This is actually like seven inches. So that goes up there. But the standard for all of them, like this one over there doesn't have it, or it has something similar. It has a little ring going around and a little no hand symbol, but this is actually a little bit closer. So that one's actually less than this. So uh, we need to make sure that we stay at least six inches away, okay? Um, so then when I'm ready to cut, we wanna make sure it's on our fence and then I can bring my saw down and I want to line it up so it's just touching the edge of my line, okay? Now, these two miter saws, are called sliding compound miter saws, okay? Because what they can do is they can slide in and out, so I can cut boards potentially this wide, and I can also swivel them on an angle, so I can cut this at like a 45 degree angle or other angles. 
like for example, if you're making like a picture frame or something like that, or a box. Um, and I can also tilt the blade on an angle this way, as well as this way. So that's why it's called a compound sliding layer saw. Uh, so we got these two miter saws here, so they're typically going to be used to break down our bigger boards to more symmetrical sizes, uh, which we can then use on other machines. And then we also have one more over there. Uh, it's not a sliding miter saw, it's just a, a chop saw that just chops down. Okay. Now, with this sliding feature, you only really need it on wider boards. So if your board isn't that wide, typically we'll have this lock in place so it doesn't have to move. Okay. And then we are ready to cut. Okay. Now, whenever using the miter saw, uh, you need to make sure you hold this securely when it's sliding because the way the blade spins, it could potentially come back on you. So you got to make sure you got a firm grip on it so it doesn't move around. Uh, except when it's locked, you don't have to worry about that so much. Uh, and if we ever have to cut odd, irregular, or round shaped objects, you should never ever use this machine. Okay because you're not gonna be able to hold it securely against the fence and the table, and it could potentially spin out of control, and you could potentially get hurt, okay? Uh, like for example, my uncle lost the tip of his finger, like the little tip of his finger on a miter saw this summer, because he was rushing a cut, and he made his last cut, and it pulled his hand towards the machine, so things can happen, so you gotta make sure you stay away, and don't rush through it. Um, now, you gotta make sure your piece is at least eight inches. So is this, so remember how big I said I wanted to cut this to? 14. 14, so this is plenty big enough to use on the miter saw, and I can still hold my hand safely outside of the danger line, and we can make our cut nice and easy, okay? Now in some cases, uh, you can clamp this to the table, like with there and here, uh, if you want it to be more secure. And if you're ever cutting a bunch of pieces that are the same size, what you could do is you could use a stop block, so I could use a piece of wood like this and say I want to cut a bunch of pieces that are this size. I could line this up like that and then I could put my stop block here and clamp it in place. So then once it's clamped, then I could just slide this over to this mark and I could cut the same thing every time and as long as I don't bump it too hard, it's always going to be at that same measurement. Okay. Is there any questions? about the miter saw. All right, so let's turn on the power. So can someone hit the green button for me? And I'll show you guys how to work this. So just big gray box, green button. All right. So when you're using this machine, to turn it on, you have to push your thumb on this little button, squeeze the trigger, and it turns on. With this one, there is a little trigger here. So you just have to pull on the trigger, and it turns on. And the one over there is kind of similar, except it's more like sideways instead of like this. Okay. So, when we're ready, let's line up our cut again. And then when you cut, you want to, if you're sliding it, so I'll have to use the sliding feature. You want to bring it back a bit. You're going to push it down all the way, and then back all the way, and then let it stop before you bring it back up. Okay, so it's going to look like this. So nice and easy. Make sure you let it stop and then bring it up because if I bring it up too soon, it could potentially catch this piece of wood and send it flying somewhere. So make sure you keep it down all the way so the blade doesn't catch it on this. Any questions about the miter saw? Fine, think you're good for this one?